NATO forces in Team Yankee are getting an upgrade with the release of NATO forces, a new source book due out in October. The Canadian, Dutch, French and Australian forces from Free Nations are all expanded and updated, with Belgians now added to the roster as well. Battlefront have kindly sent me a PDF of the book. Join me for a sneak peek inside. NATO Forces is the next upgraded release wave for World War III Team Yankee. The book is a 160-page hardback book, illustrated and in full colour. Like all the Battlefront source books, this is very pretty and professionally laid out. Before we go any further, just a disclaimer. Battlefront have approached me to be a content partner for this release. This is why I have early access to the books and products for this release. I plan to do my usual impartial reviews, and Battlefront haven't asked for any special treatment. But it's just fair that I declare this up front. Back to the book. If we look at the NATO Forces contents page, we can see entries for Canadian, French, Dutch and Anzac forces, as well as a section for the new nation, Belgium. Each nation is a self-contained entry in the book, with national special rules, formation diagrams and unit entries, which show the unit stats and details. Canadian forces have been expanded outside Europe, adding grizzly mounted infantry for the home front, alongside cougars and coyotes for fire support and recon. Plus the Canadian Airborne Company list adds heliborne infantry. And of course, there's shiny Leopard 2 tanks. France gets the Leclerc, which as a third generation MBT is a big step up from the lightly armoured AMX-30. Dutch get the Leopard 2A5, and even the Australians get limited access to LAVs and M1A1 Abrams. Plus NATO forces adds Belgium to the roster, a whole new nation armed with a mix of existing equipment. Each nation also has different camouflage for their vehicles and uniforms, so there are special painting guides for each section. These give detailed painting instructions and include suggested Vallejo paint callouts. Of course, you're free to paint your forces to your own tastes, but this is a good starting point. Each section finishes with a catalogue. This outlines what products you need for that nation's forces. This can be handy, because while many nations have their own unique units, some also field kit purchased from other countries or have support forces from other militaries. This catalogue identifies what you'll need to buy to add these to your force. For example, Belgium is the new entry to the game. Their equipment is a mix of West German tanks and tank destroyers, American SP artillery, British recon vehicles, French aircraft and Dutch APCs. As far as I can see, only the Belgian infantry platoon is new. All the rest can be made using existing box sets for other nations. Each nation also has an entry outlining their role, actions and deployments within the timeline of the fictional conflict. I think I've said before that's not a section I refer to much in the source books myself, but I know a lot of players like it, and it's always beautifully illustrated. The maps and phase lines of the battles look great. Interestingly, in NATO forces this covers two areas, the forces fighting in Europe, plus covering the home front for Canada to link their forces to the area of operations explored in Red Dawn. There are often nice little details hidden in these narrative sections as well. For example, while I knew about Batus, the British armour training grounds in Canada, I had no idea the Germans had a similar training facility at Shiloh. I'm sure these forces will add interesting support options for Canadian forces operating in the Red Dawn Theatre on the North American continent. Similarly, there's mention here of the Canadian Special Service Force, a mobile ready reaction force based around their airborne regiment. This suggests we might see elements of this force included in the lists as well. Part of the point of this book is to add new units and formations to these nations. That gives the various NATO forces here options to make them competitive against other already reworked nations. 
Newer books have extended the Team Yankee timeline by a few years into the 1990s, giving Soviets, the US and Britain access to more heavily armoured and harder-hitting tank options. These newer lists can be harder for Free Nations lists armed with previous generation tanks like Leopard 1 to counter. Not impossible, but harder. You have to handle your forces effectively to pull it off, and often need to rely on allies for units with a heavier punch. NATO forces extends the Team Yankee timeline range for the Free Nations forces as well, giving them access to new kit in their own right. I'm going to be a bit partisan in the example here. I field Australians. A cursory glance here at the Anzac Force diagram might not look like much has changed. Tank squadrons are still Leopard AS-1s, and infantry are mechanised troops in Vietnam-era M113 APCs. Even the British support looks pretty much the same. But even here we can see the Anzac Force gets a new unit, an LAV Trials Cavalry Squadron. Australia actually trialled and later adopted the LAV in this role, but the NATO forces rationale is that one of the Anzac Cavalry Squadrons was re-equipped with these in theatre to make up for losses in action. I don't care what the rationale is. I get LAVs for my Australians. There's also changes to the M113 cavalry troops, allowing more historically accurate mixes of M113 LRVs and MRVs, something Australian players have been asking for. There's even cavalry assault troop infantry available, separate from the mechanised infantry. Replacing vehicle losses is also the rationale for adding Australian crewed M1A1 Abrams. The points cost of these is eye-watering, but the AT-22 and 19 front armour are welcome options. You only get two to four of these in a single troop in tank formations, or in formations where tanks are an organic support option. Including A4 Skyhawks for air support helps with authentic flavour. Harriers are still an option, but New Zealand Skyhawks are more thematic. Even existing units like the Milan anti-tank section get an upgrade, with Milan 2 missiles becoming available. I'm not trying to cover the forces in depth here. I'm planning another video for that. My point is that there are increased options across the board in NATO forces, designed to bring all of these nations up to par with all the other nations that have already been updated. It's too easy to look at the Leclerc for the French, the Leopard 2 for Canada, and the Leopard 2A5 for the Dutch, and miss the smaller changes, tweaks and improvements to other units in the force. This is probably as good a time as any to talk about some new releases for NATO forces. The big new plastic kit is the Leclerc main battle tank for the French. Previously, French forces relied on the AMX-30, a lightly armoured tank designed to use speed and mobility for protection. It was also fairly simple, lacking a laser rangefinder and even gun stabilisation. In contrast, Leclerc is a third generation tank. It's a big step up for French armoured forces. Modular composite armour gives it excellent protection, and the long barrelled 120mm gun gives NATO standard ammunition a higher muzzle velocity increasing armour penetration. I will have a separate video on this when I get hold of one, so I don't want to go into too much detail here. Other new kit releases of note are for the Canadians. Their home forces get the Grizzly and the Cougar wheeled vehicles. Both these vehicles are developed from the Swiss Moag Piranha 6x6 armoured troop carrier, the same vehicle that the LAV 8x8 series vehicles was based on. The Grizzly is the APC, a transport vehicle for Canadian mechanised infantry, armed with a machine gun in a small turret. Cougar is the fire support variant, mounting the 76mm gun armed turret from the British Scorpion. These are not listed as plastic, so I'm guessing they're resin and metal kits. The Grizzly and the Cougar are also separate box sets. One new Canadian kit I almost missed is the Iltis a Volkswagen-designed 4x4 utility vehicle. Canada Licence produced these, using them for reconnaissance, but also as an anti-tank platform mounting the tow missile launcher. The light weight and mobility of the Iltis made them useful for air mobile operations, 
Adding the main anti-tank punch to the Canadian Airborne Regiment's Airborne Company list in the book, the jeep-mounted recce patrols are also the company's eyes and ears. French get the Leclerc, as we've mentioned, but I think the VAB T20 fire support section is also new. The T20 variant of the VAB Armoured Infantry Transport adds a 20mm gun in a low-profile turret. Up to two of these can be swapped for standard VABs in an infantry section. Plus, VAB T20s can also be taken as a self-contained fire support section of three or four vehicles. French infantry teams now get the Eriks as an anti-tank option, available as an upgrade in the platoon. There's also 120mm wheeled mortars, and the Mistral AA platoon. The mortars come with their own VAB transports to tow them. Mistral availability is linked to the number of Roland AA batteries in your force. Dutch forces also get mortars, with TDU-705, the 120mm mortar platoon. These also operate alongside their own tracked transports. While Anzac forces have new units, none of it is new kits. Belgium is similar. Despite being a new nation, all their gear is taken from the forces of other nations with existing kits. Only their infantry is new. The box includes figures for seven FNFAL rifle teams, plus a command team, three Milan missile teams, a 60mm mortar team, and a Blindicide or Apilas AT team. As far as I can see, that's all the new releases. To get back to the NATO Forces book, the final section is a set of scenarios for the French, Canadian and Dutch forces. Alternative points for the scenarios also allow you to play through these using a single nation. Each scenario can be played standalone, or all three can be played as a linked campaign using the consequences and campaign rules included in Mission 2 and 3. One is a rearguard action aiming to delay the initial Soviet advance. The second mission is a counter-attack, a dawn attack by a Canadian armoured squadron. The final scenario is a French ambush against Soviet second echelon forces. The French have a mixed force of armour and cavalry against advancing Soviet tanks with infantry support. This one looks like it would be a hard battle, as the French need to keep the Soviets off the objectives until turn 6. The very last thing I'll mention is this little section. It's just one page, but it adds missile upgrades to NATO forces, including the US, West Germans and the British. The HOT-2, Milan-2 and M47 Dragon-2 missiles are added to the game. Each of these adds a little more armour penetration, helping keep pace with armour advances with the new tanks. As we've seen with similar tow missile upgrades, if you take the upgrade, you need to upgrade all the eligible units in your force. So that's a quick overview of the NATO Forces book for Team Yankee. Players of the nations covered in this book will be pleased to see their lists and equipment updated to match the other upgrades for the US, Britain, West Germans and Soviets. It brings the French, Dutch, Canadian and Anzac forces up to match the extended equipment timeline for Team Yankee. There's also enough new gear and list updates to make this more than just a revamp. Leclerc for the French is a big step up, but the Cougar and Grizzly for Canadian Home Forces add exciting new options as well. The same goes for the Canadian Airborne Regiment. That new formation will give Canadian players a whole different style of force to play. Personally, I'm happy to see the Anzac lists have been reworked to include more historical composition of forces. The format is one we're all familiar with by now. The narrative flavour, special rules, formations, unit stats, product catalogue and painting guides for each nation, plus some playable scenarios. All laid out in a beautifully illustrated full-colour hardback book. This has only been a quick taster. I plan to cover the individual nations and their lists in more detail in other videos, plus the information on the product due in the three release waves due out during October and November so keep an eye out for those. What forces are you most looking forward to? Do you already have a force covered in this release, or are you looking to start one? What new release products are you most excited for? Let us know in the comments below. 
Again, thanks to Battlefront for supplying the PDF of the book for review and for selecting this channel as the content partner for NATO forces. I'm really excited for this one. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.